This isn't a review or a demo on the Tone Master Pro. It's what a player of 30 plus years would be asking if I had to go back to the very start right now and begin all over again with the experiences and the lessons that I've had along the way. The question is not at all, are modelers and profilers here to stay? We absolutely know that to be true. They are. But I'm really curious, and please let me know in the comments, what do you prefer? As fellow players, what's the ideal situation? What do you really like the most? This is the stairway to tone. I put amps upstairs because, you know, better musicianship with louder amplifiers. Now I could well be a total tube amp dinosaur who may or may not have a large collection of consumer grade cassette decks in my garage from the 1980s, awaiting restoration. But let's face it, even the solder fumes that I've inhaled have not damaged my brain so much that I don't realize that alone is the first compelling argument for the modern solutions. For tube amps, you need space, physical distance, and an environment both within your home and frankly, let's face it, outside of your home and circumstances that allow you to really enjoy those tube amps. Now the reason that I'll die on this hill gets into my life experiences and the things that have unfolded over 30 years of playing guitar. This right here says a lot about the integrity of Leo Fender. It's the tweed amp that wouldn't die. Lupe's name is still inside, despite being under the Cumberland River for five days during the 2010 Nashville floods. Now, what I want to know, and frankly, maybe what Lupe would too is, will the Tone Master Pro survive that long? Will the Fractal, the Quad Cortex, the Line 6 Helix, the Kemper? We'll talk about that in a moment, but because this is getting really heavy, and I'm a guitar player, not a weightlifter, let me put this down. Much like a bass player laying down a big, fat, greasy groove, so deep you can smell it. Much like we smelled the mold and the mildew and the river silt when going to find this in the triage area. Here we are with this uh, flooded out 56 Tremolux. Clean it up, it, it works. I gotta put the camera down, but you'll hear a tone. Does the soup Nazi not suffer for his soup? I suffer for my tone. You've been a good friend to me, Kramer. You're the only one who understands me. Sometimes this amp comes to me in the middle of the night and says, you are the only one who has not sold out to digital profiling and modeling. You are the only one who has not captured my tones and profiled me and sent me around the world and sold me online as though I were some cheap floozy. I love vintage gear, but I'm also not 19 anymore. And when I got into that stuff and began developing a real passion for it, it was an investment and not an impossibility. When I got that amp, it was between the second and third year of college, I went home for the summer. I went into Music 6000 on Pacific Avenue in Olympia, Washington, and there was that amp, $995. Now compared to the Tone Master Pro that's going for $1,700 on Sweetwater right now, the Helix, the Kemper, the Fractal, I mean, I understand inflation, but when I look at it, I paid $995, quickly found a good amp tech. It was T. Warren in Seattle, Washington. Took the amp to him. We had a great time. These are happy childhood memories. He was watching Columbo when I showed up at the door and a bit upset that I had not knocked sufficiently before I walked into his shop. But we got over it. Outside, it was about dusk, and I was listening to A Day in the Life by the Beatles. But what does any of this mean for you? The bottom line for you is, first of all, what kind of player are you? Take stock of that. And I don't mean just stylistically, although that's important as well. What kind of music do you like? Is there one thing that you're devoted to that you're really focused on becoming the best in that area? Or are you interested in a wide variety of things and you want a lot of sounds at your fingertips all at once? But also, what are your interests? Like for me, I like to tinker with things. I've always been interested in tinkering with things long before I worked up the nerve to tinker with any of my stuff. You can learn to work on your own tube gear. You gotta be careful but it can be learned. The digital stuff, I don't know how you'd begin to start learning about it at all, even if you were interested in it. This gets into kind of your personality. If you're one of those people who just likes to get something, unbox it, use it, and throw it away when it stops working, you need to be the one making those decisions for yourself. But purely from a service standpoint, I'd be looking into that because I don't like to buy gear that much. That Tremolux, I bought it. It's working over 65 years later. It's been underwater for five days. Spent a year drying out. Yes, the original output and power transformer survived. Yes, I have the original speaker still in a box. It could use a recone, but it still worked after it dried out. Incredible. I'm not saying that a computer needs to last 65 years because at this point, all of that modeling stuff is basically like a computer for guitar players. But ask yourself, am I okay with that? 
or do I want something that's going to be with me throughout the rest of my musical life, I'm not going to be the one in a million story on the internet telling you that if you go ahead and you spend a bunch of money on a hand-built custom tube amp or you wind up really going crazy and spending more money on an old tweed fender, that all of a sudden you can throw the thing underwater and it's still going to work and that it's literally indestructible. I'm not comfortable assuming that responsibility and I don't think that any builder today would be comfortable assuming that responsibility. But there is a well-known and well-documented longevity to all that old stuff and it's stuff that can be maintained and still be working not just good enough but optimally. Now as far as tone, flexibility, and versatility goes, I'm really simple as a player. Remember this gets back into your personality. I'm of that old school mindset where you should be able to plug your guitar into your amp, turn it on, and play something great. The reason that pedal showed up in my life was mostly living in Nashville and just being a guy who needed that stuff to make other people happy from time to time. But at my core, I easily could have stopped after I got a fuzz, maybe a silicon and a germanium fuzz, an Octavia of some kind, a Wawa of some kind, and a Univibe, and then an Echo pedal for the old Chet stuff. That's like nothing compared to what you see on people's pedal boards today. These guys that have like a new booster on their board every three weeks and they're on YouTube, I don't understand that world. It doesn't mean that I'm right and everybody else is wrong, it just means I don't understand that world. So it's not a selling point to me that if you buy this profiler or this modeler, you have not only the amps, but all the effects at your fingertips. Bottom line is, I don't care. Now, most of my own generation isn't even like that. Here's the plot twist. It's the performer. It's not the gear. It's the musician. It's not the gear. For me, the amplifier is an extension of the instrument, and I like really being hands-on with it. What kind of tool do you need to get the job done? If you want to record yourself, but you don't want to go down the rabbit hole of really learning to engineer, to really capture guitar tones, where to set the mic, and what does this mic do with that mic pre, and I was sincerely and legitimately interested in all of this, but if you're not interested in being bothered with any of that stuff, of course, it's so much simpler with modern solutions. Then there's your circumstance and environment. I'm in a unique situation. I have musician neighbors. And I'm pretty much able to play the guitar the way I want to play the guitar. That's a fundamentally different situation that can't even be compared to somebody living in Iowa in an apartment with a neighbor that goes to bed at 7.30 every night and gets up at 3.30 in the morning and you just want to have some fun playing your guitar after work. The quality of your life and not getting thrown out of your apartment is far more important than anything I'm going to tell you about tube amps feeling better, about any superior tone that you might get with a real amplifier. None of that matters. You just need a solution for that moment. And in that case, the modern stuff might be the best thing that ever happened to you. It's just something that I'm personally not interested in myself. I don't want to be going through 256 different presets and going through menus and hooking things up to my computer and updating the firmware when I just want to be playing the guitar. But what's torturous to me might be completely inspiring to somebody else. And I'm not trying to be wishy-washy or to just give you a vague answer that leaves you with more questions than solutions. I told you at the very beginning of this video, these are the questions I would be asking is what kind of player am I? What are my concerns about longevity, about serviceability? Do I want to work on my own equipment or not? What kind of musician am I? What are my interests in life? And if you're good with going ahead with the modern solutions, maybe just from a buyer beware standpoint, I'd just make sure that you're getting something that will stand the test of time, that'll be supported for at least as long as you need it to be in order to feel like you made a wise purchase. I'm gonna leave you with the full iPhone clip from that day in 2011, when after over 12 months, we turned on the amp expecting absolutely nothing and were both pleasantly surprised. It dried out for a long time in my guitar builder friend's workshop. And the amp, remember, at that time would have been 56 years old. If you haven't already subscribed here and you're enjoying it, I'm going to be updating this channel very regularly. Make sure you don't miss out on the party. We're going to keep adding new stuff all the time. In the meantime, enjoy this video from over a decade ago, and I'll see you real soon. Here we are with this uh, flooded out 56 Tremolux. Clean it up, it, it works. I gotta put the camera down, but you'll hear a tone.
speaker or anything. I just, this needs to go in for service, but it's, it's flabbergasting. It's astounding. 